Hey guys, Andrew Steinmetz, QAQC Manager with Genco Inc. Um, I'd like to begin with a new web series on NEC 2020 code explanation. So my goal with this is to pick certain codes that possibly uh, need further explanation uh, or explaining to understand it a little bit better and clear so that it will help you out on the field. Um, so look forward to many more videos of certain codes. If you guys find other codes that you feel need more explanation, feel free to make a comment below and I will do my best to make a video on that. Um, or, you know, contact you directly. We can go over that code. Uh, I love diving into the code to figure out, um, these little gray areas that we run into and make sure you guys are you know, understanding the code and even myself learning about these codes and, and figuring out uh, the best approach for them. So today I wanted to start with 314.28, pull and junction boxes and conduit bodies. So this is essentially how you size a large pull box um, with the size pipe or raceways that you're running into this box um to get the correct code size box by the amount of raceways or size of raceways you have running into it so let's get into it so 314.28 boxes and conduit bodies used as pull or junction boxes shall comply with 314.28 a through e exceptions terminal housing supplied with motors shall comply with provisions of 430.12 a minimum size for raceways containing containing conductors of four gauge or larger that are required to be insulated and for cables containing conductors of four gauge or larger the minimum dimensions of pull or junction boxes installed in a raceway or cable run shall comply with 314.28 a1 through a3 where an enclosure dimension is to be calculated based on the diameter of the entering raceways, the diameter shall be the metric designator trade size expressed in the units of measurements employed. And this is why I really like the NFPA uh, link uh, because it has these enhanced content. Uh, you can find this in, when you get the NEC workbook as well, but these are uh, details that they go into that aren't in the normal code book. So they, they further explain a lot of these codes and it really helps uh, to understand them. So enhanced content, section 314.28A addresses raceways or cables that contain conductors four gauge or larger and are required to be insulated. One conductor that is not required to be insulated is a grounding electrode conductor, a GEC. Thus, where a GEC is installed as a sole conductor within a raceway, conduit bodies used as part of the raceway system are not required to comply with the enclosure dimensions of 314.28a. So basically, if you're just running a ground, um, a large ground through these raceways, and that's it, into a pull box, you don't have to follow these rules. Um, basically, it would just be uh, the wire fill calculation you would use for that box. Straight pulls, number one. In straight pulls, the length of the box or conduit body shall not be less than eight times the metric designator trade size of the largest raceway. So an easy way to remember this is eight is straight. So if you have uh, conductors going through a pull box that are not spliced, and going in one side of the pull box and out the exact opposite side of the pull box, then you use the eight times designator. For example, a straight pull with trade size two conduit would require a 16 inch long pull box. Eight times two equals 16 inch. Although 16 inches is required minimum length, a longer pull box might be desired for ease in handling conductors. So this is the bare minimum, right guys? So there's always a bare minimum. Um, you know, if you feel like it's needed, go a little bit larger. You know, it's, it's better to go bigger than it is to just skate by and get by with the minimum. 
now here's the big one angles or u pulls or splices where splices or where angle or u pulls are made the distance between each raceway entry inside the box or conduit body and the opposite wall of the box or conduit body shall not be less than six times the metric designated or trade size of the largest raceway in a row. This distance shall be increased for additional entries by the amount of the sum of the diameters of all the other raceway entries in the same row, row on the same wall of the box. Each row shall be calculated individually and the single row that provides the maximum distance shall be used. So when you're doing this rule, you take the largest raceway going into the box and you times that by six and then you choose one of the rows that you're that are going into this box on one side the same side as the the large raceway that you chose and you add them into the six times rule so you would go if it's a two inch six times two is 12 and then say you have five one inch in that same row then you add five to 12 and that gives you 17 inches as the minimum that you need for that size. <clears throat> Exceptions, where a raceway or cable entry is in the wall of a box or conduit body opposite of the removable cover, the distance from the wall to the cover shall be permitted to comply with the distance required for one wire per terminal in table 312.6a. So that's talking about if you're coming in through the back of the box and the cover is in front of it, there's different rules for that, and you'll find that on 312.6a. <clears throat> the distance between raceway entries and closing the same conductor shall not be less than six times the metric designator of the larger raceway. When transposing cable size into the raceway size in 314.28a1 and a2, the minimum metric designator trade size raceway required for the number and size of conductors in the cable shall be used. So this is talking about the part that most people mess up on. Um, so not only do you have to do this math to figure out the correct box size or pull box, you also have to figure this out from the distance from one raceway, the entry weight raceway to the exit raceway. So the pipe that's coming in, you have to, if let's say it's a two inch, times that by six for the uh, exit raceway, and that those raceways have to be 12 inches apart. The six times rule of 314.28A2 applies to straight through conduit entries. If the conductors are spliced as part of the straight through wiring, adjusting the example in preceding paragraph of trade size to conduit, if the conductors are spliced within the enclosure, the required pull box dimensions could be reduced to 12 inches. Six times two equals 12. Where splices, angle, pulls, or U-pulls are made, the distance between each raceway entry inside the box and opposite wall of the box must be not less than six times the tray diameter of the largest raceway plus the distance for additional raceway entries. See the following exhibit. The additional distance is calculated by adding the diameter of the other raceway entries in one row on the same side of the box. So this is what we were talking about earlier. So you have the six times two, because you have a two inch right here, gives you 12 inches. And then since we have more over here, right? So we have one inch, one inch, one inch, one inch, one inch. So that's five inches right there. You would add that onto the 12 inches, which would give you 17 inches. And again, this is the minimum, 17 inches. Raceway entries enclosing the same conductor are required to have a minimum separation between them. See the exhibit below. The intent is to provide adequate space for the conductors to make the bend. So here's what I was talking about. So not only are you sizing the box, but you need to size the entry and the exit. So right here we have C, the two, two inches. 
So C right here is six times two, 12 inches is required between raceway and closing the same conductor. So we need 12 inches between these two raceways. Then we got D, the two, three inches. So we do six times three is 18 inches required between raceways and closing the same conductor. So there needs to be 18 inches between these two. And then we got the four inches right here for E. Six times four is 24 inches required between the raceways and closing the same conductor. So we need to make sure that these are 24 inches apart for proper wire bending um, to go through there to not you know, damage the wire or anything like that. So those are the basic rules on sizing a large uh, pull box. You can use this rule uh, with smaller conductors uh, but generally speaking, with the smaller conductors, we're going to use uh, box fill calculations, which is a, a code I will go into on the next video. Um, but you should be safe using this with, when you're use, using the larger size uh, pull boxes. Hopefully, guys, this helped um, clear up any misconceptions or, or misunderstandings about this. Um, let me know in the comments, again, if there's other codes you'd like me to do or or if you have a different understanding of this and we can go into that so until next time i uh, hope this hope this helped and i hope everything in the field goes great for you guys thanks